This is the Ohio Adult Allies Podcast. Welcome. Here, our mission is developing, inspiring, and empowering youth leaders. Our topic for today is healing-centered engagement with special guest, Dr. Lee Portia Moore. Now, here's our host, Juliana Fellows. I am Juliana Fellows from Prevention Action Alliance. I am the Community Prevention Manager for Youth and Young Adult Services at Prevention Action Alliance, and I oversee the Ohio Youth-Led Prevention Network, which supports the Ohio Adult Allies program of this network. Each year, Prevention Action Alliance hosts an an Adult Ally Summit. This event is intended as an educational, networking, and professional development opportunity for adult allies who work with youth, work in youth programming, and youth-led prevention programming throughout the state of Ohio. The event provides content that enhances the theory and application of youth-led programming. At this year's summit, we have invited Dr. Lee Portia Moore from Flourish Agenda to discuss healing-centered engagement. Dr. Lee Portia Moore, will you please introduce yourself for our listeners? In your introduction, please also touch on the purpose of the organization you're representing, Flourish Agenda. Thank you, thank you, Juliana. Hello, hello, anyone that's listening in cyberspace. My name is Dr. Lee Portia Moore, and I am a senior trainer with Flourish Agenda. I come into this space with lots of years of practice um, as a licensed clinical social worker, a higher ed educator, um, and also juggling a bunch of other really fun hats. And within my role in context at Flourish Agenda, for those of you not familiar, Flourish Agenda is a national nonprofit consulting firm that works with youth of color, schools, and youth serving organizations, foundations, and local governments to build and implement strategies to allow young people to flourish. And we do this using our healing centered engagement process and module sequence. Well, that sounds wonderful. And we're about to learn a little bit more from you. So, my first question is how would you define? healing-centered engagement? Ooh, that's a fun question. Um, A big part about healing-centered engagement, first and foremost, is that it's an embodied experience. And being an embodied experience, it's a principle and outlook and something that you're going to sit with inside your core of your soul to really help you have restoration, hope, and power as you think about healing yourself So that way you can do more for the people that you are serving and particularly young people. When um, I think about like what healing and healing engagement is out in the communities and for individuals, I really, really um, hold heavily into how do people help themselves heal so they can better support other people and particularly young people. Uh, Thank you. I love that you said that it's a individual self-centered piece of the individual and focusing on that, that empowerment piece, that sense of positive self, those um, highlighting those areas about one's identity that are positive. So that being said, many of our listeners are familiar with trauma-informed care. How does healing-centered engagement differ from trauma-informed care? Yeah, great question. Um, this is a very common question for us as well because healing and engagement expands upon trauma-informed care. And so where in trauma-informed care, it's sometimes asking the question of what happened to you. Healing-centered work goes what's right with you. From a trauma-informed lens, you're focusing on episodic harm and injury to the individual, whereas healing-centered work focuses on the holistic healing of individuals, interpersonal relationships, and institutions. And so it's going out of that micro level to a a macro and a meso level as well. In addition to that, uh, trauma-informed care is very clinically approached and individual approach and healing-centered pulls in the work of the environment and the context of um, trauma as it arrives in the environment. And we can do this by supporting providers with sustaining their own healing and well-being. I I love that perspective of the centered engagement and how it is different than the trauma-informed care. Um, Now, we've been in a a bit of an uphill in our environment for the past, well, almost two years um, per the pandemic, among other um, things that are going on in our environment. But we know the pandemic has created many hardships and stressors for families and youth. 
why is healing-centered engagement particularly relevant in today's context? Oh, yes. Uh, I think about today's context and right now my mind is going to like COVID pandemic um, and thinking about all the levels that we need to heal on. And when I explore the roots of healing and engagement, our roots are in trauma informed care and expanding upon it. But it's also an ACEs that it burst childhood experiences and expanding upon it. And when we think about all the harm, all the things happening in our society just right now within the last year and a half, we've experienced just life changes and how we work, how young people learn. We're also learning how to live our lives within the context of a bubble of six feet and a mask, right? And in that same space, I think it's even more important right now because we're reminding ourselves that we all deserve to heal. And I feel like, particularly with the pandemic, it has pushed lots of people in our society to give themselves grace and to pause and to say, you know what, I don't have the capacity for this. And that might have been language they might have been used to before when they were in the console hustle and bustle of their everyday lives. And healing centered work really pushes you from going from hustle and frenzy into this area that we love to call flow. And when we're in this space of flow, we're allowing ourselves to be flowing in healing, flowing in grace and accountability, as well as acknowledging the role of social justice work and everything else going on in our lives to support our healing journey and recognizing that it's not a linear process. Wonderful. Um, I like that idea of flow. Um, I know that m when I think of flow, I think of engaging in something that an activity that I'm doing and just everything else disappears. You know, you get into that mode and stuff and, it, and that in and of itself feels really good when you come out like, wow, I like I totally focused on that moment in time. Um, but I also really enjoy what you said. <laughs> I also really enjoy um, what you said about how it's about giving ourselves grace. And I think when adults model that behavior in front of young people, I think that sends a very big message that yes, this has been some difficult times. We've faced difficult challenges, some way more than others. And to just be able to take that pause and say, you know what, um, I need a moment, uh, whether that's to check in with myself or check in with, you know, something in particular that I'm struggling with and I need more understanding of. So I really, really enjoy that you said giving yourself grace and that if adults can model that for young people, then I mean, just think of how that could perpetuate into the community. <laughs> so what does healing center engagement look like in practice? What are some concrete strategies or examples of healing-centered engagement? Yes, fun question. I feel like we at Flourish could ask this question a lot, uh, particularly because people are learning to move out of the conceptual mindset and into an embodied mindset. And so some of our strategies and some of our tools are word choice, like not as nuanced as people are expecting because they're thinking about conceptual work. And, and a lot of times in PDs and trainings and buzzworlds of the day, we're like, okay, this is the thing you're doing, conceptualize it and do it. Whereas when we talk about healing work, we're like, we don't want you to conceptualize it. We want you to embody it. We want you to live it. And we do this through our karma principles. And so karma is an acronym for culture, agency, relationships, meaning, and aspirations. And when we talk about those tangible skills, we'll ask you, like, who are you? And in this who are you activity that we have people do with another partner or with themselves, you have to keep answering that question over and over and over again until you really get down to the root, the deeper stuff, that stuff that we hide and shield from people. And we begin to ask ourselves, now that you've got to that rooting area, how are you healing in these areas? How often are you hiding from these things? And so with that, we remind folks that a lot of our techniques are questions questions that allow you to engage in exploration, to open up doors, and particularly engage in some more individual and collective agency. And so um, in healing work, this can look like exploring how are you really establishing your goals? And are you taking the time to build awareness? And from building awareness to then figuring out what am I trying to understand that my barriers are blocking this goal and then getting into that action step. And as you get into that action step from a healing lens, we then ask you to measure and reflect what did that action look like how did it work how did it not work and then go back and repeat that process again so you can continue to build agency not just for yourself for everyone else that you're also serving and inviting people in 
And a part of that invitation in are one of our biggest strategies that uh, we frequently tell people who connect with us. It's just, how are you healing? What does it mean to heal? What's right with you? And having people sit in that space and start thinking from an acid-based lens and a strength-based lens and not just thinking about, okay, X, Y, and Z is wrong and I got to go fix it. Honestly, what a um, refreshing perspective to have in that way, but also to put it into practice. Um, like you said, it brings, <laughs> brings you away from that conceptual piece of, you know, your person and more into, oh, I really have to consider what my answer is to this question, um, to those questions. So thank you for sharing that. I, now I am starting to do my own work in my head as we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to continue, how does healing centered engagement support adult allies relationship with young people? Oh, yes. One of my favorite karma principles that are that relationship, right? Because I think about when we are working with young people, um, and particularly the word ally, the first thing that always comes to mind is my cultural humility lens that I apply to my healing center and engagement lens. And that's asking myself, did this young person call me their ally? Or am I engaging in ally behaviors waiting until I get called an ally? And in that same context, when we think about that relationship, healing and engagement is going to push these adults in this space to begin to check themselves, to ask themselves, okay, what am I projecting onto this young person that was projected onto me as a young person? And I'm maintaining that status quo and I'm normalizing whatever harm that I experienced in the past to be like, nope, this is the standard that everyone should be doing. And so like, for some of the young people I work with sometimes, like especially right now with like college um, admissions coming up and being like, you have to go to school and you got to apply yourself. And it's kind of like, yeah, and also that might not be the route that you want. And so let me not project my idea of success and academic excellence onto you because there may be another route that you are currently looking for. And it's okay to be a senior in high school and to be like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Congratulations, you are amongst half of the world. Um, none of us really truly know, but it also takes that bravery with healing work to be honest and transparent with young people in those relationships and be like, nah, I don't know. Like, that's a great question. How did I pick this career? Ooh, it took a lot of hoops and barrels and jumps and trying out some stuff. And it wasn't just like, I went to sleep last night, I woke up and I'm like, yep, I'm gonna be a doctor. Nah. <laughs> and, you know, holding that place with young people. And I think with our relationships and making them healing centered, one of the big things that we strive to in healing work is beginning to figure out how can we uplift young people by also uplifting ourselves, which means how am I modeling the behaviors that I wanna see them doing? And and also, how am I then mirroring with them what they're doing and getting feedback and asking questions and acknowledging that, you know what, my love language, my communication language may not be congruent with theirs. And so I should seek feedback. I should seek their wisdom and let them know that you have the authority here over your life. And I'm just here as a guide and you're open to accept what you want to accept or not. And I think that's a, a shift in how we view power dynamics in relationships, particularly with young people. Thank you for expressing all of that. And I completely agree. I've been working with youth for a very long time. You could say it's my passion. Um, but, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I've throughout my career, I've learned so much about what you just spoke about and that when we are engaging with young people, we, there's so many benefits to allowing them to have the space to express themselves and how they really feel, even if they don't know how they really feel. Um, and I, I feel like when adults open themselves up to having that type of engagement, you know, being invited in by a young person to be an ally and having that safe space for some of that work exchange being done um, just speaks volumes to the um, work that you do. And also, I think the work that our adult allies are also trying to do um, with the young people, because we really, um, like I said, had, when we spoke earlier, the ultimate goal is that empowerment piece. And empowerment is your belief in your ability to impact change. So it starts internally and then spreads externally. 
<laughs> Thank you. So um, in reading about healing centered engagement, Dr. Jinray talks about two way healing and emphasizes that adults must sustain their own healing, which I absolutely love, and well being before presuming they can help young people heal, which seems core to Flourish Agenda and what you do in your work. How does healing centered engagement support adult allies' own well being? Yeah, that's a fun question. I, I love uh, Dr. Jen Wright's work on just exploring that two way healing, um, and particularly in relation to adult allies. Because when I think about it, the first thing that always comes to mind is being on a plane. I love traveling. And every time you're on a plane, right, the um, airline attendant will tell you, all right, the oxygen mask will fall down if we lose cabin pressure. Put your mask on first before helping someone else. And to me, that's what healing work is. That's when we say we need you to take care of yourself before you go help anybody else, right? Put your mask on first, because if you try helping somebody else and you're running out of air to breathe, you're going to pass out. And now they're going to pass out. And now there's two people pass out on the floor unnecessary stuff right and so how do we prioritize that area um and for us it's really heavily rooted in walking what we uh walking how we talk or talking how we walk however that little statement goes right um and really rooting ourselves in our practices and so when you engage with us when you show up with us we're going to be like all right let's get grounded let's really sit with ourselves and ask some questions and talk and engage and like just hold space together before we get to business um, and acknowledging the role of fun. Fun is actually one of Flourish Agenda's um, values. And it's personally my favorite one because it reminds you like, you know what, you're an adult, you're allowed to have fun. You're a child, you're a young person, you're allowed to have fun. And what does it mean to value fun in a workplace, but also value fun in the lens of healing? And for adult allies doing this work, when they think about their well being, I would invite them to consider how do you show up as your authentic self? How do you heal your authentic self on a variety of levels from a cultural lens, from a spiritual lens, from a physical lens? Like, yes, we can say, oh, I can go out and take that walk. I can go journal for a few minutes. But in that same context, how do you invite other people in to also engage in that healing work with you? Because we have to constantly recognize that not all of us have the capacity or the privilege to be like, I'm going to go take a walk by myself for five minutes. Um, as somebody who was one of seven children, I wish my mother would have told me that as a child, like, you're going to go by yourself? Why? Why are you leaving me? I'm going to bug you now. Like, now I got to follow you outside, even though I might be two feet behind you because I'm curious where you're going, right? The nosy child in me is like, don't leave me, mother. Where are you going by yourself? <laughs> And so recognizing that and normalizing, okay, what does it mean to heal in community? What does it mean to heal in family? And how can you invite your family and your community in to your healing practice to support your well-being and their well-being and being able to communicate and be transparent, especially as adults, to say, you know what? I need to take a break for a second. I've been on Zoom too long. I need to rest my eyes. The same way that we're looking at little kids on Zoom screens for that pat this past year and being like, ooh, this is what school looks like. I'm so happy. I'm not a child right now because we know we couldn't do it. And in that reminder of saying, you know you couldn't do it, give that child grace to be like, this is a lot of screen time. And typically someone's like, no more tablet by now. And now I'm like, oh God, I don't want the computer anymore. Take it away from me. And so, you know, shifting and realizing the similarities we have um, with young people, because when we realize those similarities, we can really realize and conceptualize in a different way what wellness can look like for all of us. Such important work for sure. It just, I, you know, all, as you're talking and, I, and I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about how I engage with young people, not just in my work, but in, in my personal life. Um, and I think about the past, almost two years, actually for me a little bit more beyond that on a personal level, but um, really digging in and giving, again, going back to what you said, giving yourself grace. I mean, for adults to be, be to, to give permission to adults to do that, I think speaks volumes because I sometimes feel like as adults, we feel ultra responsible for the youth that we are I don't want to say in charge of, but I mean, for the youth that we're trying to guide and we're always on to try and, you know, make sure that they're doing the right thing or they're making the right choices. When really, when we allow ourselves grace and we give them grace to, you know, make a choice and then change their mind. 
or explore other avenues that maybe aren't typical for the teen experience as adults see it anyway. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate this message that you are providing um, now and for the summit. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm, we're gonna start to wrap up, but um, I would like you to tell our listeners where they can find more information on Healing Centered Engagement. Yeah, so to find out more about Healing Centered Engagement and of course Flourish Agenda, you can go to flourishagenda.com. And on our website, you can peruse around and you can of course find out about our module service, which is HCE, but also more about our, our team, our values and how we do our work. Thank you. Um, and one last question. What final piece of advice do you have for our adult allies? Ooh, that's a fun one. Okay, let me think real hard on this final piece. Mm. Um, I invite folks to really sit with themselves and ask yourselves, how are you giving yourself grace today? And today could be whenever you hear this, <laughs> the day after you hear this, but how are you giving yourself grace? And as you name how you're giving yourself grace, I want you to ask yourself, do the young people in your life see how you give yourself grace? Or do they only see when you're in hustle and frenzy? I invite everyone to show their grace that they give themselves and allow the young people that you serve, allow your families, your friends, and everyone else in your community to see how you flow so they can flow with you. I, I love that message. And I feel like I should record that and just every morning play it or when I need it play it. <laughs> yes, yeah. And yeah, that's a very, very powerful message and a very uh, powerful check in with yourself and also how you might be able to play that out with the youth that you are engaging in. So thank you so much, Dr. Moore, for one, participating in the podcast, and for two, bringing this information, this um, way of perceiving our world and ourselves to the summit, I think this is going to be seen as extremely valuable in thought and practice, not just in concept, but in practice as well, because with anything new um, or even anything that we are, that's not new, it doesn't become muscle in the brain until it's practiced. So I appreciate all of your information and your participation. And I want to thank you for today. And I want to thank you in advance for your presentation at the summit. And for adult allies or really any young, any person working with young people who are interested in, ten, in attending the summit, it is December 3rd. It will be virtual from nine to four. And we have all that information listed on the preventionactionalliance.org website. You go go to the events tab, or you can go to the Ohio Youth Led Prevention Network tab, and you will find all the information on how to register there. And of course, if anyone has any questions at all for myself, I can be reached at jfellows at preventionactionalliance.org. Thank you. And if you would like to check out more about Ohio Adult Allies for information resources, um, please check, go to ohioadultallies.com or check out the YouTube channel, Ohio Adult Allies. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This has been the Ohio Adult Allies podcast. For more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube by searching Ohio Adult Allies. You can also find our episodes and more information about us at ohioadultallies.com.